What's up, dude? So today's video is inspired by a pretty unlikely source, and that unlikely source is a guy named Brian Chesky. If you guys don't already know, Brian Chesky is the founder and CEO, or at least I believe still CEO of Airbnb. And a couple of months ago, he went on Twitter and stated that flat design is over. Now, I assume he's talking about flat design as in like UI design. And uh, I took that as an opportunity to poke around the Airbnb site. And Airbnb, as you can see, is a very flat website still. So uh, work on that, I guess, big guy. I did find at least a couple of kind of interesting little UX stuff that they're doing on the website. And one of those is their buttons. So if you come to, at least I know these buttons on the listing pages, they had this little spotlight effect that follows around your mouse cursor whenever you move it. Hopefully this is actually coming across decently in the video. I know the colors are really, really close, but I figured that this was a pretty good effect to talk about because you can use the same kind of fundamental idea of just having stuff follow your mouse and apply it to all kinds of different stuff. Now, for the sake of the video and actually being able to see what's going on, I made a significantly easier to see version of this. Looks like this. And we're going to be building it using React, although most of the code is just normal JavaScript. Like the actual effect code is just normal vanilla JavaScript. So if you want to do the same thing in vanilla JavaScript or in another framework like Vue or whatever it might be, you could totally take the same code and refactor it a little bit and get the same output, essentially. If you just want to grab the code really quick so you can take a look, you can look at the first link in my description and go to buttons, scroll down a little bit, and you'll find one called spotlight button. Click on code up here at the top right, and you can grab it in either JavaScript or TypeScript. And while you're there, feel free to check out all the other cool stuff we have on the website. There are all animated, interactive UI components made specifically for React. But I will leave that to you guys to go and explore if you want to for now let's uh look at some code so one thing i didn't mention just super quick is that i'm using tailwind css for this if you are not using tailwind css i'll try to do my best to make sure that i am actually calling out what all the classes are it should be entirely self-explanatory so not a big deal either way nothing tailwind specific in this but just figured i would call it out so you guys aren't commenting like hey dude you should have said that this was tailwind css i I know, I apologize. So all that I've got so far is this little wrapping button class with this wrapping div, and that is just giving this a background color and then a flex and setting everything to the middle of the screen, height of screen, pretty straightforward, nothing crazy here. Inside of this, I just have what will be a button in just a second. We can actually go ahead and actually make this a button and start adding our styles. So I'm gonna speed through the styles super, super quickly. Um, and so we can actually get to the fun kind of mouse move part because that's what this really should be talking about. Um, so we'll just skip through really, really quick. First, I'm gonna add our class names to our outside wrapping button. We can skip through, we'll say a width of full, a max width of XS is what I'm using, which is 320 pixels. I'm giving this a rounded border, like a border radius of eight pixels, a background of slate 950, that is this RGB value, a little bit of padding on the X axis, a little bit on the Y, y axis, a font size of 18 pixels, a font weight of medium, which is 500, and a text color of white. Super straightforward. Now we have a button. Super cool. I will call out that I'm making this uh, larger, kind of on purpose, with this width full and then this max width, just so we have a bunch of room to actually move this element around on the inside of our button. But feel free to make the button whatever size you want to make it. As opposed to just directly adding in our element here, what I actually want is I want a couple of spans. So I want one span that's going to actually hold all of our kind of text. And then I want another span down here that's gonna hold our kind of our little white element or whatever we have moving on the inside. So I'm actually gonna create two spans and I'm just gonna drop in the styles for these as well. The first one is going to look like this. So this is just gonna what's gonna actually hold our text. This is gonna have a pointer events of none. This is because we're gonna be adding event listeners on mouse move. And without this pointer events of none, you're gonna get some kind of janky results whenever you hover over the text itself. Then I'm also giving this a position of relative just so that I can add a Z index of 10. That's because I'm gonna want this span to layer on top of this span. Then finally, I'm giving this a mixed blend mode of difference. If you haven't seen this before, there's a whole bunch of different mixed blend modes. You can play with these. But all that this is really doing for us is if I go back to our example, see whenever I hover over the button and like whenever the background element kind of goes over the text, how it changes colors. That is exactly what you're getting from this this mix the this mix blend mode thing. It's just going to change those colors for you automatically. Super fun stuff if you haven't ever uh, played with mix blend mode before, but not for this tutorial, maybe for another time. Finally, for this bottom span, this is just going to be our little circle element, which we need to center into the middle of our little button here. First, I need pointer events none for the exact same reason as before. We'll come back to some of this stuff, but uh, right here, I'm giving this just a set width and height. This is 128 pixels for any CSS people out there. And I'm giving it a border radius of just 9999 pixels to make it a complete circle. And then finally, just some background color. 
Now, one thing that it looks like I actually forgot on our button is to add an overflow of hidden. So I'm gonna come back up to the top and give this an overflow of hidden. That should clip off. Oh, as well as a position relative. I guess I didn't do that. Let's see, relative. Nice, okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I just forgot those two classes up here at the top, position relative and overflow hidden. Um, but as I was saying just a second ago, to actually center our element, because we're absolutely positioning this span to our button, we can't just do like display flex and center it that way. Instead, we have to do the old trick of absolute positioning, which looks like this. So a position of absolute to position this, obviously absolutely to our button. Then you can set the top and left to 50%. You can also just use one half if you're using tailwind like I am. We'll actually replace those like this. So a top and a left of 50%. Then same with a translate X and translate Y. So let me actually remove those just so you can see what that looks like. With those removed, it's centered, but it's centered to the top left corner of the element. So in order to translate our element here back to the middle, that last 50%, like based on the size of the element, we can use minus translate X of 50%. Again, I can also just use one half. And then same with translate Y. So minus translate Y, it's just like a transform translate also of minus 50% like this and now we have a centered element, super fun. Now that we've gotten through that super quickly, the next thing that we need to do is grab some references to a couple of our elements. So specifically our outer button here, because that's where we're, gonna, where we're going to add our mouse move listener, as well as to our span down here, because we're gonna wanna be able to change some styles on that span based on wherever we're moving our button to. Um, so if you haven't used refs before, or if you're not using React, it's actually, oops, I actually have to import that one second. If you're not using React, you can do your normal like document.query selector and grab a reference to a element. But the way that we're gonna do that in React is using our use ref hook and then taking the output of that and assigning them to our elements. So for our button, it's just gonna be use ref. You can just pass null into these and then assign them to our buttons. Gonna do the same thing for our second span or like our, our element here. Just give that a ref of span ref like this. Now with that done, we can start adding our event listeners. We're gonna do this in React using a use effect like this. And this is just gonna be an empty dependency array because we just need this to run one time whenever the component mounts to actually set up our event listeners. And to set up our event listeners, first we're gonna, we'll just start by console logging something. So I'll say const handle mouse move is going to take in some kind of event from our mouse move listener and we'll console.log I'm on. Sweet. Now to actually set up our event listeners, this is just gonna be normal basic JavaScript event listeners we're doing here. The only difference is that we're going to set them based on our ref. So we'll say btn ref dot current to get the current value or the current kind of element of that ref. And then it's just your normal dot add event listener, pass in what kind of event. In my case, I want mouse move and then pass in our function that we just defined. Then finally, we need to remember to clean this up when we're done. The way that we can do that in our use effect is by returning a callback function. Oops, I misspelled that. Return, jeez, retrun, return, nice. And this will fire whenever our component dismounts. And we actually want to call instead of add event listener, remove event listener. Beautiful, and now if I go ahead and I open up our logs here, and mouse on over our button, we'll see that as we move our mouse around, we start getting our little console logs. Now, obviously console logs are not what we want. We want this little element to kind of follow our mouse around. And we need two things to be able to do that. First, we're gonna need the size of our full button. So in this case, it's gonna be 320 pixels from left to right, because I set that kind of set width. Um, and then we're also going to need the offset, which is how far our mouse is from the left side of this button all the way to the right. Fortunately, both of those values are very, very easy to get. So if I come on into our mouse move listener here, we can start by pulling off the width, say const. It's gonna look something like this because we can destructure it. And the way that we get our width is from our events, our events target. So remember this event is being passed in by our event listener here in our little callback function. And on our event target, there's going to be a function called get bounding client rect. Oops, rect. There we go. Nice, and this will return a whole bunch of stuff, but the thing that we really care about is just width. So just to make sure that that all looks good, we'll console.log width, and then mouse over this, and we'll see that we're getting our logs of 320, which is exactly what we expect. Now, in order to get that offset that I was talking about, that is even easier. So I'm just gonna define a variable, we'll call it offset, set that equal to event.offset x, and that will give us our x offset, which just so you can actually see what that looks like, we'll log them both. 
And what we should notice is that all the way on the right, our offset value is very close to zero, then, or all the way on the left rather, then all the way on the right, it is going to be very close to the full width. So in that case, exactly 320 and 320 of our entire element. And what we can do with this information is we can calculate the percentage at any given point we are across our element. So obviously right in the middle here somewhere, it's going to be about half of the element. Let's actually just log that really quick. So I'm just going to say offset divided by width to get our kind of basic percentage over here, very close to zero over here, very, very close to one. Obviously we want to turn this into a percentage from zero to 100%. So instead of just doing it like this, Let's turn this into a template literal actually. And we'll say something like this. We'll say offset divided by width. And we also want to divide or multiply that value by 100 to turn it into a percentage. And then finally just give it the old percent sign like that. And now we should have something that looks more like a percent. So as I come over here, I am now about 0% across the whole button. As I get all the way over to the right, I'm very close to 100% of the whole button. Then, you know, somewhere in the middle as I move through the middle. Now, I'm only going to do this on the x-axis, and I'm going to leave it for you to do it on the y-axis. So, like, up and down if that's something that you want to do. The way that you would do that is pretty much the same thing we're doing so far. So, you're going to need instead of width, you're going to need height. And then on your offset, you're going to need offset y instead of offset x. And you can do the exact same kind of math if you want this to also follow you up and down. But... I'll leave that as a challenge for you. For now though, I'm gonna take all of this, I'm gonna pull it out of our console log here and set this to a variable. So I'm gonna call it left, go something like that. And this is just going to correspond to our basic left value that is on our span right now. So this is defaulting, remember, to, let's see, where is it, right here, to 50%. But whenever we actually move our mouse around, I wanna change this 50% to whatever this new calculated value is, right? And you could just do that by directly setting the style, but I actually wanna be able to animate this and control how quickly it kind of follows my mouse around. And if you follow me on this channel, you know I use frame or motion a lot, but we're not gonna be doing that here because there's an even easier way to do that for something like this. And that is just using the built-in element animate method. Now, this is the reason that we pulled this span ref as well as the button ref. Remember this span is linking to our element span that we want to follow us around. And we can set the styles of this with an animate directly based on this ref. So that's going to look something like this. We'll just say span ref. This is directly under where we defined our, our left value. We'll say span ref dot current. And then we can call the animate method on it. And this is going to take two different inputs or like two different uh, parameters. The first one is going to be what we actually want to change. So if you wanted, you could say, you know, color, change it to blue. That's obviously not what we want to do. We just want to change the left transform. So left like this. And then it needs a second parameter, which is the definition of how you actually want this to animate like the, the options. So for instance, we want to set our duration. For my previous example, I set a duration of 250 milliseconds. You might want this faster. You might want this slower. I'll let you play around with that yourself. But if we just save that right now, we're gonna see that it almost works, but we've kind of got one little issue. So as I move it around, if I move it really quick, it's all working well. But if I stop over here, see how it kind of bugs out a little bit. And the reason that it's doing that, it's a little bit easier to see if I'm like, just go like this. If I just come in from the right, it goes over, but then it maps back to the middle. And that is because we also need to set a fill of forwards. So I'll come in here, I'll say fill, forwards. This is right next to where I'm setting my duration. Now what fill of forwards is going to say is that I don't just want you to animate to wherever my new position is. I want you to stay there. Whereas by default, it's going to animate to wherever your mouse is, and then it's going to snap back to its original position. So with that saved, we should now see that I can move this around and it will just continue to stay where my mouse is even when I stop moving it. Now this is about 95% of the way here. The only last thing that I want to do personally is whenever I take my mouse off of our button, I want it to also snap my element back to the middle, whereas right now it just kind of sticks there. Another way that we can do this is just kind of copy and pasting the exact same stuff we've done here a second ago. So I'm actually going to take this whole chunk of code for my handle mouse move function and I'm going to drop it down here and we'll say console or handle mouse leave, I can remove literally all of this top code. And all that I want to do here is I want to animate the left to zero, just, or not, sorry, not to zero, to 50%, because 50% is our initial value. Remember, if I come down, you'll look at our span again, 
the left value is 50%. So that's what we want to snap back to whenever we're done kind of interacting with this element. I'm also going to bump down the duration a little bit because I thought it looked a little bit nicer. And finally, obviously, we need to actually set this up on our event listener. I'll collapse a couple of these things so they're not in the way anymore. But we'll take our handle mouse leave function here, and I can just copy paste our original event listener here, paste that down here, take our new function, and replace our old handle mouse move method right here with it, or more handle mouse move function, and also change this mouse move here to mouse leave. Oops, leave. So instead of just having one event listener on mouse move, I'm also gonna have one more on mouse leave that just sets everything back to where it started. Of course, we also need to remember to remove this event listener at the very end. So we can do the same thing again that we're doing up here. Just remember to replace it with remove event listener instead of add event listener. And now we actually should be good. So if I make this a little bit bigger, so it's easier to see, as I kind of mouse around, it all snaps to my mouse. And as I leave, it snaps back to the middle. Again, all the code for this can be found on my website. First link in the description, just go to buttons, scroll down a little bit, and you'll find all the code for this in both exactly how we just built it as well as in TypeScript. You'll also be able to find a whole bunch of other components on this website that use similar techniques to build all kinds of other cool stuff. This is gonna be it for today though. If you got anything out of this, I would massively appreciate a like and a subscribe or any comments letting me know what I could do better in future videos, what kind of animations and stuff, what kind of interactions you guys would like to see me make videos on next. But uh, that is gonna be it for today. I will see you guys next time. Peace.